Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I'm a coronavirus uh, specialist, and I'm going to try to answer your questions. All right, next question is from Sonia, and uh, the question is, can Dr. Ben address the Novavax vaccine? Sure I can. How's it different from the others that are already approved? How is it the same? Yeah, all right. Well, sure. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it the same? In almost every way, it's the same. <laughs> How's it different? In one small way, it's different. So, all right. Um, so how it's the same is that it is using the exact same version of the spike that you would find in every single approved vaccine um, that's either an mRNA or an adenovirus vaccine uh, in the world. Yeah. And so this is the original 2019 version of the spike, which, as you know now, if you've been paying attention and breathing air all this time, uh, you know the virus has changed a little bit and uh, kind of moved away from that. But I would say in a large part, all of these things that we're calling different variants would probably not classify as really different variants in most other viruses. Like the difference between you know two strains of uh, SARS-CoV-2 is nowhere near the difference between influenza A and influenza B, or even some of the wider spread um, versions of influenza A. So yeah, yeah. It's, we're humans, we like putting things in a nice little box that has a name on it, so we can put it on the shelf and yeah, just, you know, it'll be there. It'll be nicely labeled. Um, so Novavax, um, let's see. You can think of it as uh, the lazy version of the vaccine. So, um, Imagine the uh, AstraZeneca, for example, or the Johnson & Johnson, or any of these other adenovirus-vectored vaccines. They've got DNA inside, and this is like getting, you know, a set of instructions mailed to you. And then you got to build the birdhouse all by yourself. you got to buy your own wood or whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, the DNA comes in. You're going to have to take that DNA, read it out, make a messenger RNA from it, take the messenger RNA, send it to a different spot, and turn it into spike protein. But you're going to get spike protein in the end. It's just going to be a multi-step process. So that's the adenovirus vaccines. That's the AstraZeneca type vaccine. The next one would be the mRNA vaccines. So these are a little, uh, a little easier. This is like uh, maybe the IKEA furniture version. So with the mRNA vaccine, you get, you don't have to take the DNA and make a messenger RNA. You get the messenger RNA ready to go. And you then just take that, put it in the right place, and you start cranking out uh, proteins from it. Uh, easy, yeah. Um, and then the messenger RNA breaks down really fast because RNA always breaks down really fast. It's not, it's too, <laughs> too fragile for this world, this harsh world, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you're gone. You're left with immunity and nothing else, which is pretty good. Yeah, uh, like it races itself. So that's like getting a little kit for the birdhouse. It's got all the pieces there and all the screws and the little, you know, wrenchy uh, Allen key that lets you put it all together. You got to assemble it yourself, but uh, it's not so bad. Uh, Novavax is just a birdhouse. You just going into the craft store and be saying that one. Yeah. So they're actually producing the protein, going to put the protein right into your muscle, just like all the others. And then instead of having to make any part of it yourself, you're just going to react to the protein. In terms of biology, how well it's going to work, I don't know that there's any real difference. The main difference that I would see would be that with the mRNA vaccine, you can essentially make an unlimited amount of it. And so what they've gone in with with the mRNAs is really a lot, a lot, a lot of messenger RNA because they finally got good at making tons of this stuff. And so that's why you see really strong responses and that's why they have consistently the highest levels of protection. With the adenovirus vaccines, the Johnson & Johnson, for example, they actually have to grow those things. And so you have to basically farm little cells and uh, tell them, you know, feed them and water them and get them to produce these little tiny vaccine things for you that you then collect up and purify and put into a person. So you're limited by, yeah, the limits of farming. You can only grow so many cells. You got to keep them fed and watered, basically. You got to change their little diapers effectively. So it's tough. Um, Novavax same sort of deal. You have to grow this vaccine. 
Um, and uh, once again, yeah, you got to grow it and then purify it and then you can put it into a person. So it ought to work as well. The question would be, would they be able to put as much in? And I think the only real difference between the, um, uh, the DNA-based um, adenovirus vaccines and the mRNA-based vaccines is that you just put in more of the mRNA. You're putting in more copies, more chances in more cells to make a successful spike. Um, and uh, the worry would be that if it is hard to make the proteins, then it could uh, they could end up going with a lower dose and the protection may not be quite as strong. But I think honestly, it's gonna be pretty nearly identical. And you may also see a different side effect profile. Like if they're putting less in, you may end up with lower side effects. This is what could happen. We gotta wait for the clinical trials to know what does happen because what could happen is of no real importance and what does happen is everything, yeah, in science. So yeah, let's, um, uh, we'll wait and we'll figure that out uh, when the data's ready. Um, but yeah, that's Novavax and um, yeah, they're actually uh, um, one of the companies that's uh, helping to produce the Novavax vaccine is right here on campus. So there you go, that's our disclaimer, yeah. I am not paid by them. <laughs> Uh, but I've met some of the people. They seem nice. Yeah, they got a great facility. So good for them. Good for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, um, the best advice out there still is uh, first vaccine available is probably the right one for you and uh, get it in you. Yeah, I mean, that's the, <laughs> just in general sense. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, uh, as with any medical issue, talk with your doctor if you've got any questions. Uh, um, yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.